Greetings all. Uh, it's a beautiful morning here. This would be just about one of the last days of December uh, here in Hawaii. We're almost to New Year's Eve. I've been trying to decide what I'm going to make for New Year's. Anyway, I walked around this morning and looked down here underneath my dragon fruit, and lo and behold, what did I see? Some of the work I'm doing with mushrooms <laughs> is, is coming to fruition. Um, not everything I'm doing with mushrooms has worked out for me. Obviously, I'm the green garden guy. Fungi are ungreen, and so this is not necessarily my forte. But check this out. So right down over here at the base of my dragon fruit in a bunch of wood chip, uh, you'll see we have the wine cap straparia. Yeah, this has been one of the more successful fungi for us here. This mushroom grows fine um, in C2, uh, you know, right there in the garden. As long as it has a mulch of something uh, that's uh, got cellulose in it. it. It eats sawdust, cardboard, I guess it eats paper probably. Mostly I feed it uh, with, with wood chips. Uh, it seems to work pretty well. And so it's a simple process under the dragon fruit. I clean the weeds up. I put down a uh, couple inches of chips. Fresh ones clean. They must be fresh and clean. Then I spread the spawn. Then put down another layer of chips about an inch. Uh, pretty simple. Sit around. Wait. Eventually the mushrooms start to pop up. Uh, the only thing i got to watch out for with this one around here is the, the slugs. Uh, the slugs will devour it, and so we do need to bait in the area to keep it clean. Now, I had done um, some uh, drilling of logs and uh, pushing spawn in the hole, sealing it with wax and so on. And uh, honestly, most of that hasn't been very successful. I've had a couple of problems with it. One is that either the logs themselves then got contaminated with some other fungus. That's pretty common. Or... Um, the log refused to die <laughs> and resisted the mushroom. So in the case of the ice cream bean, a lot of the bigger logs that I spawned, they, they just wouldn't quit. Uh, they laid there and sprouted and sprouted and sprouted and sprouted, and so they wouldn't let the mold run. Um, this one right here, uh, most of the spawning failed. But yesterday on the back side, uh, I did get some oyster mushrooms uh, that had been put in here with the grain spawn. Um, to come out so it's partially successful um, not enough to be excited about though so I had somebody ask me about uh, uh, the green garden guy doing some of my great garden disasters yeah spawning these logs has mostly been one of my great garden disasters these logs were spawned with shiitake uh, sawdust spawn it began it looks to me like most of them actually failed um, some of it's because the logs probably got contamination from turkey tail. Some of it, with the big one back there, the, the log refused to stop growing. Um, forward log, though, which is guava, appears to be white in some of the holes where I spawned it. And so it looks like it might be working. We'll see. It's going to take some time. Well, it's obvious season again. And uh, Bill's special obvious over here with obscenely large fruits is at it again uh, so that's the second crop in the last year so I'm gonna have uh, plenty of seed for this one around if anybody's interested uh, I had somebody call me this morning while I was in the shower about the price on hobby seeds uh, I'm assuming it was probably international I don't know. anyway see you can See here, we got plenty of these. I've already been stripping the tree. We've been trying to take them down because those darn Japanese white eyes, they peck holes in the rind on this and it makes the whole fruit spoil. So, been trying to stay on top of them. Aside from <laughs> large production on a relatively short tree, this particular variety also has some of the best tasting abus that I've ever eaten. It was a chance seedling, and uh, the seeds seemed to perpetuate the genetics. So, 
Moving on from ungreen gardening to green gardening, it's time for lettuce. Um, down here in these gallon containers, you'll see panace, which is a compact form of the salad bowl lettuce. Does very well here uh, during the winter time. Uh, Eastern Hawaii in the winter is a really, really good place and a good time to raise uh, lettuce crops. Just make sure uh, that you don't let the slugs get into them. Uh, I raise mine in tubs here and raise containers. And one of the things I always do is I make sure I band those containers with a copper foil. This is self-adhesive. It's got a paper backing. Peel it off, run it around the container. This is uh, quite effective at keeping most of the slugs and snails out of your lettuce crops. Now, in my case here, I already have the container, and the container has uh, um, ginger growing in it, uh, but the ginger's gone dormant for the winter, so on top of the ginger, I have installed <laughs> gallon containers and put the lettuce in there. That way I don't have to disturb the ginger, uh, and I can get another crop out of the same container using the same protective device. Yeah, it's one of the reasons I'm fairly hot on uh, uh, poly containers, the tree tubs mostly. They're UV stable, they don't break down, um, they're light, you can carry them around, they drain well, they're designed to grow plants in, and uh, the uh, copper foil will stick to them. Over there I'm using the two inch wide Amazon. Uh, that, that comes off their website. Um, this stuff over here is the one inch wide Surefire from the local nursery. Well, there's a little bit of ungreen and green gardening this morning. Uh, heading on into that new year. Now, you all stay safe and be careful and, you know, avoid getting drunk and sharing a lot of virus, eh? Aloha. No. Hang loose.